Hello and welcome everyone to the Pokemon TCG YouTuber Awards of 2023. In this award show, not YouTube video, we have 10, count it, 10 distinct categories of the best Poketubers on the internet. Now trust me guys, the last 72 hours has been rough. The amount of YouTube that I have watched in the last three days to ensure myself that I got this list right, that this is the absolute end-all, be-all, no ifs and or buts about it, no way I could be wrong on any of these 10 categories. The only way that I can make damn sure that I got this right is by dotting all my I's crossing all my T's, and watching a shit ton of YouTube. But guys, if this was three years ago, this list would have just said Lee and Hart like six times, and there'd only be six categories, and that would be it. The fact that it is 2023, and we have ten different categories, and one automatic winner right here at the bottom there. See right there? What does that say? This is the pregame winner because there's no contest. Pregame winner goes to... Deep Pocket Monster for most influential content creator because of Card Party. All right. Other than that, we have an amazing list, and it's it's going to be a long one, but this is a big deal. This is the most time, effort, you name it, that I'm going to put into a YouTube video. So, yeah, it's going to be a little long, but it's going to be very all-encompassing, and there's no way in hell you're going to disagree with a single one of my choices. Let's get to the award show. Yeah. So before we begin, all 10 categories will have one runner-up and one winner. So we have a total of 20 different YouTubers. That's a lie. There are two YouTubers that will each make two appearances in today's award show. So number 10, best pack opening content creator, our runner-up everybody, Jake here and welcome to the hobby. I get people asking me all the time, what is the best starting point for a brand new collector? What sets should they be hunting for? What sets should they complete? First, I know Pokemon card collecting can be incredibly confusing because there are so many different cards, so many different sets out there, and it can get really convoluted very quickly. So I put a ton of time and effort into thinking what are the best starting points, what are the best sets for a brand new collector to really jump into. So in today's video, we are gonna have five different sets that are great starting points for a brand new collector. These sets are gonna be incredibly rewarding and fun to collect, but they are going to teach new collectors a lot of the basics that will stay with you for years and years to come as you build on to your Pokemon card knowledge. So without further ado, let's get started with our first set and that is the original 1999 Unlimited base set. The original base set was the very first set that I completed when I got back into the hobby after college, and this set is incredibly rewarding to collect. Twice Baked Jake. This man has 127,000 subscribers, 607 videos, and probably he's the most best-dressed Pokemon YouTuber in the entire community twice baked jake all right let's get to our winner for the best pack opening content creator the year is 1991 birds and people are living together in seemingly perfect harmony until one day a young man catches fire this is phoenix Like a phoenix, you burst in 
Holy shit, that is an intense intro. The crazy thing about Pokevault's intro is it goes on for another 15 minutes before he finally starts talking during his live streams. Seriously. Okay, but seriously, Pokevault. He's got the cutest kids, the hottest wife, and a shit ton of Pokemon cards. What's not to like about that guy? And to be honest, Sean, grant me your powers! He's got fire fingers. So yeah, he has pulled, he had a birthday stream the other day where he pulled like every single card that matters in the entire X and Y block. The guy is crazy. He's a funny goofball. Yeah, we love him. All right. So the next category, most informative content creator, runner up. Hey everybody, what's up from Pokemon Classics, reminding you that the classics never go out of style. Today we're breaking down the top 5 news stories in Pokemon, along with some of my own personal thoughts and commentary on each one. That is my goal on this channel after all, is to keep you all informed whether it's the good, the bad, or the ugly. Also, as is tradition on this series, don't forget to stick around to the end of the video for my top 5 content recommendations. These are some of the best Poketuber videos of the month and I'd highly encourage you to give each one a watch. Anyway, guys, let's dive into our first story. Classics never go out of style, except for when Moonbrion is worth more than basically every single Wizards of the Coast era printed card. Seriously, though, Pokemon Classics been around forever. Everyone knows them. Everyone loves them. Even the most popular people watch them to get their info. He provides a serious amount of insight on basically all aspects of Pokemon TCG. Now let's get to the winner for most informative content creator. Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio, and if you don't watch many of my videos, make this one of the ones you watch. Because the lovely folks at the Pokemon Company took me to Creatures recently, and I learned all about how Pokemon cards are actually made. And I thought I'd share that with you in this particular video. It's not something that most people get to do. I am very, very grateful to the Pokemon Company for letting me visit creatures and finding out all about this. And before we get rolling, I have to show you what the creatures office looks like when you walk in. These walls are made of Pokemon card templates and all nine basic energy are hidden in there. There's one of each. Yes, that includes fairy. No, that doesn't include dragon or colorless because they're not basic energy. So, how are Pokemon cards made? Well, there are three goals of the Pokemon trading card game. Number one, encouraging people to spend time together. Number two, the products and the game experience working together properly. And number three, making a game that everyone and anyone can enjoy. Bear that in mind when you're talking about and looking at the Pokemon trading card game. There are different things that need to be balanced that is very, very important. Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. Hey, <laughs> I did it. All right, so Wassy here, over from the UK. This guy's been going at it, focusing primarily on the Pokemon TCG aspects of content creation for like, I don't know, 10 plus years? Really long time. Very well known, and this guy grinds. If you like a YouTuber who grinds and grinds hard and you want your content every single morning, this is your guy. He covers everything. It's fun to listen to. Gets a little crazy sometimes with other YouTubers, but hey, the YouTube community is pretty crazy. So anyway, that's my guy for the most informative Pokemon content creator, PTCG Radio. Okay, let's get to the Rookie of the Year content creator, Runner Up. Oh man! I mean business today. I had to get this buttoned up shirt. I would say I bought it, but I didn't. I had to tie it up to my neck. So you guys know that I mean business. We're gonna talk about Crown Zenith today and my favorite cards to have in your collection or the favorite cards to buy from Crown Zenith. But to start the video off, I wanna just read you a comment that I got and it was very conversational. I'm gonna read it out, but I'm gonna put it on screen. So here's the comment. Crown Zenith is poo. 
There is so much product and so many BS collectors graded into the ground. What I think he means by this is graded cards are putting the prices on these cards to the ground. So many new Pokemon collectors went all in on Crown Zenith and they really made a bad decision and pretty much lost all of their money. I don't know how people lost a lot of their money. So if you bought this ETB, from what I've seen, it's been $90 for a while now. Since it came out, I believe it's been at the same price for a while. From what I've seen is that an ETB has stayed around $90. So I don't know how people can lose all of their money. If you bought singles when the set just came out, because keep in mind the set just came out not even a year ago, not even eight months ago. If you bought those cards, yeah, I think people are silly to buy cards right out of the gate. If you buy Obsidian Flames cards right now, you're gonna lose money. But with Crown Zenith, it's a very strong set. And if you lost money buying sealed product, just hold it because in the next three, five years, in my opinion, at least, Crown Zenith will be a lot more money at least from what it is today. All right, I know what you guys are thinking. You're thinking, why does he have a car in his banner? It's actually not a car. That's a, that's a souped up Maridon. <laughs> so, his cat photo bomb, so Zelda's photo bombing. <laughs> All right, shush, you're right in the mic, Zelda, shush. Okay, so, this guy, JSL, I can't even tell you guys you know what? Yeah, no, you can stay. You can stay for the whole segment. So I can't even tell you guys how difficult it was to fight against the algorithms to find a legitimate YouTuber who just started out this year who's doing big things, okay? Wait. I'm a new YouTuber. I just started this year. I could have nominated myself. Urgh. Oh, well. He's better than me anyway. JSL, way better. Okay. So now, let's get to the winner for Rookie of the Year. JSL, I love you, runner-up. But yeah, it's okay, dude. All right, here comes the winner. What is going on, all you Pokemon collecting maniacs out there? This is Ryan, the Pika Pika Papa, and I'm already pumped. Like, it takes a lot for me to say this, but this might be one of my favorite videos that I've put together in a long, long time. And that was because you guys know I do a ton of work in the background whenever I'm putting something in front of you. But this one got me so excited, I did just an unreasonable amount of work on this, but I also got so much joy and had so much fun doing it, and I think that's why we ended up with this list. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, there's 14 cards on here. Like, I got way deep down the rabbit hole, but my mission was this. Hey, I know the full art trainer space is super frothy right now. Like, a lot of these cards are super hot. They're going up into the right, and I really believe that this is a market that's not gonna fade anytime soon. So, it doesn't mean it's always gonna have this incredible bull run to it, but I do think in the long run, full art trainers are here to stay. They're just going absolutely stupid in the Japanese, market and they're obviously performing really well here in the US market too so I wanted to spend some time and do some research and do some digging and say hey there's got to be opportunity out there let me find it for the Pika Pika Papa crew and this is the list that I came up with what's going on everybody I'm the fastest talker on YouTube and today I'm gonna show you one of a thousand Excel spreadsheets I put together last night because I drink way too much coffee and I talk actually a lot faster than I'm talking right now all right Pika Pika Papa so first of all, this guy started back in January, beginning of the year. He's already got like three, what is that? Three point oh nine subs, thousand subs. The guy's doing great. Does stuff for the community, like children's hospitals, but not in a creepy way, like Leon Hart, like a legit way. And uh, man, this guy is so rookie of the year that he's also the runner-up for the next category. So I'm gonna save a little time on this one. We won't do the runner-up because I just told you this winner of rookie of the year is is. The runner up for next category. Next category is the best investor bro content creator. Again, runner up, Pika Pika Papa. So we're going to go right to the winner right now. Folks, welcome back to Nostalgianomics. Today, we are going to set the record straight. What is the best Pokemon sealed product to invest in in each set? And I know I've been getting a lot of weird questions lately about ETBs and not PC ETBs, ETBs. And so I wanted to set the record straight. I wanted to go through and show some data because I think what's happening, and it makes sense, a lot of people are going back and they're doing research. They're doing their due diligence, which is great. The problem is they're finding sets from black and white and XY and sun and moon, and they're seeing those ETBs and they're trying to come to the conclusion that, well, if they did it then, then Sword and Shield there is eventually going to do that, and it's not the case. Folks! 
Nostalgenomics. So, Nostalgenomics, he's a, he's a little controversial. He's extremely committed to the cause, the Investor Bro cause. He leads the cabal against the good fight. And yeah, this guy is absolutely another one of those polka grinders. Day in, day out, every morning, live stream. Sometimes a live stream, the later than I make another video. Dude's crazy. I don't know how he t has time to do anything because he's just always live streaming and talking about investonomic type stuff. But yeah, he's a good guy. Him and I have become friends over the last couple months. And yeah, he's just a goofy dude with the Boston accent. He really vibes like the kind of dude he's like obsessed with Tom Brady. I have no idea if he is. I should probably ask him. But yeah, before him and I became friends, I was like, oh my God, I hate this guy. This guy is probably like Brady, Brady, Brady. I don't even know if he likes football, but I do know he loves talking polka vestments. Okay, so now let's get to the next category. This category, best female content creator. There are a billion males. So the females, I had to make sure they had their own spot. I don't know if it's politically correct to have a female category. I don't give a shit. I have a female category. And the runner-up for best female content creator is... Let's travel back in time. Picture this. It's 2004, and you, and by you I mean me, are patiently waiting for your mum to check out the shopping at Safeway, or at some other supermarket that doesn't exist anymore, when something in your periphery seems to call to you, and your little toddler eyes lock onto something filled with wonder. Capsule machines. Your mother probably lets out an audible sigh as you plead to have just one toy. Fine, just one. Fifty pence, what a scam. You spin the dial, the capsules rattle, and now you have a little piece of magic in your hands. Well, I wanted Pikachu. Can I have another one? Well, it doesn't get much more wholesome than that. And incredible editing skills. I don't know if she edits all her videos or she just pays someone, but man, I, I'm just going to assume she edits all her own videos. But yeah, Candy Evie, she's got great content, very unique, very different from your investor bros and your pack openers and your ripping shippers. So yeah, she is absolutely, at the very least, an honorable mention for best female content creator. Now let's get to the winner. to this channel and honestly when I first started doing any of this I never even thought we'd get to 10 so the fact we're at 50 is insane and guys you know I've been waiting for this milestone you've been waiting for this milestone because today we're gonna do something that I have never done before I'm gonna open a Pokemon pack that's very expensive and maybe a bit crazy, but this is a personal collection item that I have owned for a while now. And I told myself, when we get to 50K, we're going to open it. That pack is this first edition base set booster pack, but it's not just any first edition base set booster pack. It's a guaranteed holo pack, or so I've been told. Today, we're gonna find out if that's true, and we're gonna pray for a first edition Chansey in PSA 10 condition. But if we don't get it, anything is fine. A lot has changed since I started this channel. From my very first video that we did, or I did, in front of my old wardrobe doors, opening up a mystery box, from cutting all my hair off, from changing my job, from traveling the world, meeting so many incredible collectors, meeting so many of you guys as well. The journey so far has been incredible. Hands down, the single most shocking thing that I discovered while spending two straight days filming and editing this video is that Pokey Chloe only has 59.2 thousand subscribers. She is so ungodly popular in the Pokemon community that I genuinely thought she had like 590,000 subscribers. So, look, I know 59,000 is a lot, but like, she's just very well respected very loved in this community never talked to her personally uh but yeah when it comes to female content creation in the pokemon community she's about as good as it gets absolutely definitely deserving of the number one spot of best female content creator so now that we got five left we're halfway through 
Okay, I really like this next one because this next one's important. It's the most casual and chill content creator. Runner up. Hey y'all, this is TCA Gaming, and in this video, I'm going to go over some of the haul that I picked up from Collecticon here in Charlotte. I'm also going to briefly go over some of the stuff uh, that I was given. You know, from the there was a lot of people that showed up to my house on Friday. Uh, they were all people that I personally invited or that they asked to be invited after that. Um, so this wasn't like a public open thing. But a lot of people here, I mean, you you probably know them in the community. Like I'm going to be talking about Dan, Catchmall Collectibles. Uh, he was here. He actually sold me some of this stuff at Collecticon. But um, I'm gonna, that's how I'm going to touch on it. There were some pretty cool stories of different things that happened while we were here. But for the most part, uh, it was just a lot of people just hanging out, opening up packs, talking Pokemon, doing that kind of stuff. But... The reason I chose that video for Rusty, TCA Gaming, is because literally it was the best camera visibility in his webcam that I could find. The man, for every ounce of Pokemon knowledge that he has, he has one less ounce of equipment. <laughs> the guy, I'm just, hey, this man is everyone who is in the knows god amongst gods this guy rusty tca you know i love you i discovered rusty back in 2019 and man i can't even tell you how refreshing it was to just sit down and listen to rusty go over a psa return after being inundated with lean Hart videos prior so rusty's been around for a long time and i'm just I'm just letting you guys know, if you like TCA Gaming, I got a little surprise for you later in this award show. But yeah, so let's get to the winner for the most casual and chill content creator. Ah, uh, this is this is it. I, I can't believe all the anticipation, all the hype. And here we are. Happy Scarlet and Violet 151 release day. It is finally here. And a lot of people have been finding products a little bit early, maybe popping up in Walmart or GameStop or Best Buy or whatever. You can let me know in the comments section down below uh, how your pulls have been, what you thought so far. We're going to talk about pull rates in this video. Put a lot of time into this kind of data, calculating all this stuff. I think it's really important to take a look at. I've seen a lot of comments about how bad the pull rates are for Scarlet and Violet 151. They're not bad. They, I don't want. I don't want anybody thinking that they're bad. They're just not. They're not as good as what we're used to when it comes to specialty sets. They're very consistent, actually. And I'll break down the numbers for you. They're very consistent with the Scarlet and Violet generation so far, uh, but they're not as good as what you might be accustomed to in like Crown Zenith. We opened up a lot of Crown Zenith at the beginning of the year. A lot of ETBs where you're getting five, six, seven hits. And unfortunately, Scarlet and Violet 151 hasn't been that uh, that, that giving. It just hasn't been, and that's okay. Uh, so we're gonna break that down. But first of all, uh, I can't, I cannot believe that this is the last Pokemon 150 Fun Day, or is it? What's up, Fan Clan? Did you get your Danny packs? Danny Phantom. So Danny, Danny's a guy who I don't know five or six years ago decided he wanted to open up his own LGS and the rest is history. Literally. Everyone loves Danny Phantom. Everyone respects the hell out of Danny Phantom. Danny Phantom just goes down easy. I don't know what else to say. He recently hit 100,000 subs. Now he's already up to 115. Dang, he's almost up to 1,000 videos too. But yeah, Danny Phantom does work. He is an extremely strong source of knowledge for the Pokemon TCG as well as just like singles, like raw market price. But yeah, he's another grinder. He uploads a lot, and he's a very trusted, very well-respected dude in the Pokemon community. So now, this, we're going to take a little turn. Just, just, just a little turn, okay? This next category is most controversial content creator. But I do not mean the content creator themselves is the most controversial. I mean covers the most controversial topics and can get a little controversial from time to time. All right, let's go to the runner up for most controversial content creator. Hey guys, welcome back. It is time. It's Blake time. So Blake in the past has uh he's got a strike. He's got a strike on the old rattle record. Yes, he does already. He uh had at one point in time taken a hit off screen and uh, and did some shenanigans. Apparently, those shenanigans that they're gonna say 
the the head the head of whatnot dogger 69s uh that he was breaking with they're gonna say that you know what that was just we were doing it as a joke i don't think personally i don't know about you guys but i don't think it's a funny joke to be taking things off camera when you're opening other people's products especially in a higher end break pretty sure it was pokemon i can't seem to find the clip at the moment but if anyone has that clip where he jokingly uh takes that um, bad boy off screen he does the old whoop, swoop it over to the uh the person that is uh, doing the sleeving and uh yeah just send that my way if you can uh, if not i'll have to take another look for it but this is strike number two for our boy blakey blakey poo and yes i know everyone is so awestruck oh my god blake i can't believe you played in the nfl tell me more blake about how you played in the nfl and how you make more money with pokemon cards now please please tell us all enlighten us blake tell us about how you're hiring g ballers to play on to uh to, to sell overpriced packs to do carnival games on whatnot and how you guys in the whatnot circle you all circle jerky tear they off while everyone's getting scammed hey guys what's going on so rattle this Canadian motherfucker, he will get you. Don't fuck up. This man will get you and he will get you fast. And depending on how bad you fuck up, he might get you up to... How many Blake Breaks videos does he have? Like 40? I don't know. The point is, this man is doing the Lord's work. And he's been doing the Lord's work for a while. And you just don't want to mess with him. It's a lose-lose scenario. Yeah, this guy, he, he does everything. He calls people out. He does master sets. He does live streams where he just is collecting literally every single Pokemon card on planet Earth. Uh, but yeah, and then he takes a break and he, he puts people in their place. So yeah, we need, I think we have just enough. I think one, yeah, we don't need more people like him. He's, he all by himself is doing a great job. But the winner... The winner coming up here is going to be mad that I didn't choose Rattle and switch these spots around. I don't care. You, sir, coming up here in a sec are absolutely the winner. And no one is going to disagree because you're that crazy. And who am I talking about? Let's take a look. Fam, brothers of the cards, I'd rather stand beside all of you than any cabal of thousands. So I decided I'm going to Charlotte and I'm going to confront the cabal in person and make no mistake. I'm ready for battle. Yeah, this is pretty epic, and if you want this to be you, you can show up and get the whole experience. And I do mean I'm ready to fight the Covenant. Let's go. One of these cool little promos released. It's a cool promo. It's sick. But I mean, look at this. Look at. I'm just going to throw it up once again. Look at this. Look at what they're doing this over. And this is coming from a diehard Pokemon fan. Look at this shit. Look at these fucked assholes just circle jerking each other over like $20 worth of shit. Look at this. This is what our fucking hobby is. Every time something happens, money, 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 invest, 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 time, 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 no fun, no fun, no fun. Get your money, fucking fools. Get it. That's all this shit turns into. That's why everybody's there. That is why 90% of those fucks are there. I don't care. 
I'm not playing your rat shit games. I don't do it for YouTube. I don't do it for the bigger content creators. I don't suck no one's dick on Instagram. I don't fucking put nothing in my mouth. I say whatever the fuck I want. And I ain't playing your bullshit games for these promos. I'm not giving a scalper one goddamn dollar. I did it for the Japanese boxes too. Fucking test me. I didn't buy one single box of Eevee Heroes Japanese. I said fuck you and shoved it right up your asshole. That's what I did. FYI, this award show is rated R. <laughs> Okay, so Opossum Bud, uh, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. I, I don't even know if I need to explain any anything else. The guy is crazy. The guy is lovable. The guy is, like, Mighty Mouse. I don't know. The dude is just perfect for the role. It, you know, mustache or no mustache, it does not matter. Opossum Bud, you're crazy. Keep doing what you're doing. And I wouldn't be surprised... Of everyone on this list that doesn't have a hundred thousand subs, that's a possum bud not too far along in the future. This dude is just once you watch a possum bud, you, you don't stop watching a possum bud. It's as simple as that. He's just perfect for YouTube. And again, also doing the Lord's work. All right. So now we are at the top three. Okay. So this is a big deal, the top three. Let's go over what the, the upcoming three categories are real quick. So we got most entertaining content creator. We got most knowledgeable content creator. And then number one, best overall content creator. So most entertaining, let's get to the runner up. Hello. And basically, Beast Ball is coming to you soon. Do you like 151? Do you like the original 151 Pokemon? Well, this very special set is for you. I think we gotta bring back some of the boys for this one. All right, so this is a special set. And again, the resellers are going crazy. Just ridiculous prices online. I have been a good boy. I have not looked at the set list. Like usual, these packs are... I really, really love the art with the Mew on there. I love these little tessellated Pokemon silhouettes on the back. It's a very nice looking pack. Let's see what the cards are like. So I'm assuming it's only the first 151 Pokemon. Do we go... Do we do anything? Do we do one to the front there? All right, let's see. Nido Queen. We've got Pidgey there. I've not seen any of this art. We've got a little Pikachu trotting through the woods. We've got Metapod. Oh, okay. We've got the mirrors, as we've seen quite a lot in the special sets, with some crazy Pokeballs on them. That looks pretty cool. I like th I like th that. I like when there's like an image in it. It's a little bit better than the sort of just flat mirrors. Of course, these look so dark uh, on camera, especially in front of these lights. Holy shit! That is a beautiful ditto hiding amongst the rocks. Do you like good boys from down under? Max Mofo Pokemon. Look at that subscriber count. That's like almost 2 million subs. I think that means he is entertaining because he has 2 million subs. So yeah, we got people from all over the globe on here. Representing Australia, Max Mofo Pokemon. This guy, you already know who he is. And if you don't, give him a look. He is very, very entertaining. Hence, why he is the runner-up for most entertaining. Let's get to the winner. Prepare for trouble. Make it double. To protect the world from devastation. To unite all peoples within our nation. To denounce the evils of truth and love. To extend our reach to the stars above. Jesse! James and Ryan For today's video we're gonna warm up with modern then we'll be opening this 2007 Piplup special edition three-pack blister all polls will go to one lucky winner All you have to do is like comment and subscribe now grab your favorite beverage or your preferred method of Mary J, and let's fuck some shit up. Cheers. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me. I hope you've been well. We have Cleffa one last time on the backboard, 
and still holding down that bullseye is Buffet Rev. On the stress ball today, of course, we have our boy, King Merrill. So we have 26 packs of Modern, and we're starting with 16 packs of Lost Origin. Surpass the point of no fucking return, baby. Come on, baby, fuck it up. Happy Sunday, I hope all of you had a wonderful weekend. Come on, baby, let's fuck it up today. Today's gonna be a little zesty, woo! I can't wait, we need a lot of momentum going into that three pack blister. First flick of the day, bang, baby, woo! Come on now. I just need some pulls, baby, I need some momentum. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's just the first pack. <laughs> high intensity, high energy, speed, Power, velocity, violence, and absolute motherfucking chaos. Don't get your jimmies in a Russell. So this guy, Cool Trainer Ryan, is easily the most misunderstood Pokemon YouTuber on the entire planet. He is not only the most misunderstood, he is absolutely the most generous as well. I can't think of another Poketuber who has given away more just straight up value in Pokemon cards. I wouldn't be surprised this guy's giving away six figures. Every single thing he pulls on camera, he gives away to a viewer. I don't care how rich you are. That is, that is, that can't be easy to do. Man, this guy, he, he's in the moment. He's making the most of it. And he is as generous as you could possibly imagine. And I don't care how many people don't like him. He's just got one of those tough exteriors. He's a little teddy bear on the inside. You could tickle him and you'd be hee hee. He he is he is he is a soft teddy bear. <laughs> Alright, so now we go to the second to last category, most knowledgeable creator. And the most knowledgeable runner up is Hey everyone, this is SM Pratt, and I found some cards in storage today that I thought might make an interesting video. We're going to take a look at every single Pikachu trophy art, starting with the originals from 1997, all the way to the modern Pikachu trophies awarded at the World Championship Tournament. Now, before we get into this, I'm going to try to do my best to contextualize how insane this video is going to be. I doubt you'll see all these cards together in another video because I'm not sure if there's another person who owns all these cards. And that's because every single card we're about to look at has less than 10 copies awarded. These are some of the rarest and most iconic and historic Pokemon cards in the world. I even say some of the rarest and most iconic cards in general. So with that said, I'm going to try to do my best to really capture everything about each release, starting with the original 1997 first place number one Pikachu trophy card. This is the first of the first. It was only awarded to the first place winners at the 1997 official Pokemon tournament in Japan. You guys hear what he just said? He said he just found a shit ton of trophy Pikachus in his closet or whatever storage. So as some Pratt, he is the leader of the cabal. No, I'm just kidding. It's another inside joke. He is the, the number one when it comes to just Watsy, even before Watsy, even before Wizards of the Coast, like going back to like 1996, if you want to go way, way back and you want to, you want to get deep with the knowledge from the very beginnings. This guy was collecting all the rarest Pokemon cards when nobody gave a shit about Pokemon. SM Pratt, hate him or love him, the dude is an absolute bank of Pokemon card knowledge. Some of the most obscure cards you have never even heard of, he knows absolutely everything about. A lot of them, he's probably the only one that owns some of them. Anyway, SM Pratt, absolute right there with uh, the next guy on our list as the two most knowledgeable YouTubers in the Pokemon community. So who's the winner? Let's find out. Hey y'all, this is TCA Gaming, and in this video I'm going to show you guys a few consignments, not too many things. I'm going to show you something. No, 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 no. We're not just going to watch some other random one. No. Let's take a look at Rusty's first YouTube video ever. Hey, my name's Rusty. I don't really know how to make videos very well, but I thought this would be easier shown through video than through pictures. What we have here are some 
what you might think as legendary booster packs. Looks like this. If you look at them, they're really thin. I don't know if it can. That's picking it up, but it's, it looks like maybe five cards in there or so. These packs were actually saved by a Wizards of the Clo uh, Wizard of the Coast design representative. They were going into the shredder. He said, "Hey, those look cool." This is what he told me, and he went and picked a bunch of packs. He ended up opening some of the packs, and he showed me what cards were inside. Now, I'm taking his word for it, but I don't know. This will be the first time I've actually opened one of the packs. You guys can kind of share this with me. And you can see what's in here for yourself. Good thing about there only being five cards in these packs is we can actually know which packs have these cards and which don't. He gave me a bunch of them. Well, not many, but if you look closely, these are expedition packs. They say four position only. The bottom left corner, you see the word medium. You'll also see that the copyright dates are a little different. It has Wizards in it instead of Nintendo. Let's see what we got. Duck Trio, Alkazam. Charizard's pretty cool because it actually doesn't have any HP. Well, it has the HP, but it doesn't have the, the letters HP. Blastoise and Arbok. So we got five different cards. That's actually pretty good. There's seven total different cards. The other ones are Clefable. And there's one more. But, yep, I figured that'd be easier to show through video than post a picture of the pack and show what I pulled out of it because I couldn't really take my word for it. If you would have told Rusty 11 years ago when he filmed his first YouTube video that you just watched right there, if you would have told Rusty 11 years ago that he would one day become the most respected Pokemon source knowledge in the entire community, he'd probably quit. <laughs> he'd probably get out right then. He'd probably like, oh, I don't want that. So the thing about Rusty is I don't think he even likes the attention. No matter how famous or popular he gets, no matter how many people message him, he he's still the exact same guy since probably the day he was born. The guy is about as down to earth as it gets. But my God, this guy knows knows and has everything. Uncut sheets galore. It 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 just think of anything. Rusty's got ten of them. Seriously. And to be honest, good for him. No better human is doing like he is exactly where he should be, doing exactly what he should be doing. And he is doing it as good as you can possibly do it. And that's why TCA Gaming is my number one personal favorite Pokemon YouTuber. But this list is not my biases. This is the best list that I can give you based on my observations of what the entire Pokemon community loves to watch. And with that said, let's get to the number one category. The number one category, best overall content creator in the Pokemon community. Let's see the runner up. Today we are searching for Pokemon cards at night. At night. It is currently 8.35 at night. And I'm almost positive that Pokemon cards are luckier at night. At night. When you search the stores, some weird stuff happens. The vibe of the booster packs changes. We are currently at Target. Marie, are you ready? Let's go. Let's go. Now, throughout today's video, there is going to be random ghost Pokemon hidden, and I need you to find all of them. So let me know down in the comments which ones you spot. <laughs> Starting off in the very back of the store, looking at the Pokemon section back here, just to see if there's any cards in Marie. There is none back here. Oh, Why? What? Look, this isn't even Pokemon. Mm -hmm. That's not even Pokemon. What? What is this? Circus Foxy. All right, Circus Foxy. I want to put Circus Foxy back. We got to put Oshawott right here in the front, though. The ultimate weapon. No, I no, need don't. I need that. We just got started with today's I late night that. Pokemon search. Don't. Oh, not already. Not already. 
Blockbuster Rewind? What in the world? Now see, they need to make this out of Pokemon. Can you imagine if it was there was one of like the Pokemon VHSs that had like a little mini Funko in it? Oh, it's got little characters in it. Yeah, I would totally buy that. How cute is that? Oh, look here, right here on this end cap by all the Legos, there is a bunch of, oh, oh, oh. I need this one. <laughs> That one fell down for a reason, so it looks like yeah, we have yeah. to get that one. <laughs> I was going to say, there's a bunch of Obsidian Flames booster packs. Now, we have completed a set 100%. I mean, this one fell down. Marie, do we have to get it? We have to get it. Okay, and there might be a Charizard in here. Is that the target ghost that are telling us there's a Charizard inside? <laughs> Real breaking Nate. So here's another Super Poka Grinder. As it says, new videos five days a week. Here's the thing about Real Breaking Nate, though. So the key to being successful on YouTube is either yourself being very good at editing or you pay another editor who is really good at editing and i'm just saying there's so many moving parts in a real breaking nate video that just keep things moving keeps your eyes woo, 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 woo. all of that right all the stuff i i cannot even be bothered to do <laughs> but real breaking nate he's got editing figured out he's got thumbnails he's got the whole youtube all that figured out to a t and overall, once you have those things figured out, that's what puts you in position to potentially be the best overall content creator. Real Breaking Nate, he almost won. He didn't, though. The winner coming up, does it as good? I, You know what? There are so many damn amazing Pokemon YouTubers. Somebody had to win. Nate, you got the runner-up. This guy... He's very much, at this point in the current scene, undisputed. And who is he? Let's find out. Something for luck right now. Luck. Give me luck. Please. Three, two, one. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Oh my god! I just kicked the camera! Oh my god! Oh my god! I told you it was possible, guys! Up on the last car, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna, gonna be? Oh my god, my god, stop it! I am done! I am done! <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, let me just grab the yellow. Oh! Oh my god, it has KB toys on it. Collecting Pokemon cards is just a part of who I am. The memories of opening up these cards as a kid really stuck with me. The joy and smiles it brings to people's faces is something that you can't put a price on. I think it's almost hardwired into me at this point. The only thing I'd ever change would be starting this sooner. I never imagined it'd get to this level, but I'm grateful for every moment. Are you really surprised? No, of course you're not surprised. You already knew Poker Red was the winner. And that's how strong of a candidate the man is for best overall content creator. He, you already knew he was the winner. So yeah, Poker Red, he's been going at it quite a while. Also like Poke Vault has insane long live intro, but he can do whatever the hell he wants. He's Poker Red. He has maintained a squeak clean image throughout all his fame and popularity over the last three years. He has thoroughly supplanted Leonhart as the post-COVID superstar of Pokemon TCG on YouTube. And he just keeps on growing. And now, lately, he is delving out into some other content that isn't strictly pack opening. And I love it. Everyone loves him. Everyone should love him. He is a great ambassador for the Pokemon TCG on YouTube. All right, guys, so that is the video. And this Pokemon TCG YouTuber Awards of 2023 is brought to you by myself, Pokedan TCG. So guys, all I ask out of, out of all you guys, if you, if you did really enjoy this video, you don't gotta like, comment, subscribe, just tell someone about it. Hey, did you see those, that, award, that award show yet? Yeah, it's on Pokedan TCG's channel. Seriously though, 
I put in so much effort, guys. 48... Uh, I'm not even going to tell you. It's embarrassing how much effort I put into this video, and I couldn't care less. This video might as well be my love letter to the Pokemon community. And guys, you know what? Comment down below. Tell me what you agree, disagree. There are 10 different categories. And if you think there is a YouTuber that deserved to be the winner in one of these 10 categories, absolutely write it below. And I'll respond, but I bet you some other people will respond too, and we can start a whole conversation down below. But again, guys, thank you very much for joining me for the Pokemon TCG YouTuber Awards of 2023. Deuces!